Hartley. Okay. I'm Vice Chairman of the Board. David? Uh, David Mays with Mackinson and Company. Steve Stokes with Mackinson and Company. Uh, and Norm Silberdick. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. I know you had invited us on the two weeks ago on the 13th. Our materials <coughs> were in the process of being prepared for our meeting on the 20th, which we in turn invited you to uh, attend. And Jim and Mary Louise showed up at the meeting. And the way we conduct our meetings is a free interaction with the board while we're, while we're making motions and anybody can participate. We also had uh, Representative Tim Jones from the Budget Committee there as well. So, and um, you had requested uh, four reports, and we had uh, provided those reports to Christy for distribution to you from your meeting on the on the thirteenth. Uh, and as of today, the Fund is still 18 million plus. Our cost is 17 million plus, and we have about $900,000 unrealized gain in the in the portfolio, and we are generating approximately $700,000 income to the to the town. Uh, the portfolio is 60% in uh, primarily fixed fixed incomes and. A little less than 40 percent, or maybe it's a little more than than in uh, equities right now. But David can give you more details on that. And uh, one of the things that came out of the in our, our desire to uh, work with the town to provide whatever information that you would like is that uh, a couple of the reports that you requested, we we had we addressed the privacy and confidentiality of the information. We publish our. MS9 quarterly on our website, and if the town, some of the reports that we're presenting to you, you can publish on your, on the town website if you'd like, or people can link in through the town to our website. And uh, a couple of reports, we would, because of privacy and potential security, we would ask that they not be published on the website. We're always available to meet with any citizen in the community who would like to get information on the specifics of our portfolio All they need to do is contact a board member and we will contact David to arrange that but so far in the seven or eight years I've been on the board that's never happened so. uh, would you like to open mr. Bean sure thanks for coming in gentlemen thanks for your service uh, to the town uh, appreciate it very much and just going forward on that the uh, Board of Selectmen are uh, charged under statute under Chapter 41 to manage the prudential affairs of the town. Uh, the 18 million that you talk about um, represents 70% of an annual operating budget. It's a significant amount of money, and uh, it's one that we think that the the board, at least I think, uh, needs to uh, accept responsibility in line with state law as it relates to trust funds under Chapter 31 and uh, received uh, the email traffic on confidentiality. And I think that with that amount of money, with the turbulence in the stock market, that it's important that we have these types of meetings and that we have more open communication. Uh, I don't think the website that you provide information on um, is particularly current or helpful. Um, from your website in 2008, there was $15.2 million. And then from your website on 9-30-2011, it's at $14.8 million. So exclusive of distributions uh, for all, th over three years, of the town has lost money. It's important to consolidate gains. It's important to have a discussion about leaving money on the table or taking money off the table, especially as volatile as this worldwide economy is. Uh, you have to search on your website for data. 
up until the production on the website of the data that was requested. Uh, there really was no current information in, in granularity and in terms of detail, and we're getting there. Um, so thank you for that. Mr. S uh, Mackinson produced the data back in 2014 without, uh, to me directly, it was forwarded to the board, without uh, any concerns of uh, confidentiality or security risk. I have those emails. That was uh, Monday, August 11th of 2014. He was, uh, as I understand it, still president of that company. Uh, I feel here's the information that is responsive to your questions that the galley had this morning. There's, there's no uh, addressing any of the concerns that were addressed in his email to uh, town council and the town manager this week. So, um, were you talking Apple? Well, let me let me just finish. Let me just finish, please. Okay. So, uh, going along with that in your website, um, and I went to your website to to specifically address those issues. I went to the advanced trustee training on the Mackinson website, and the attorney general has provided that that PowerPoint slide, um, and that is the uh, charitable trust unit. And it specifically addressed the right to know and information request. The government should be open, accessible, and accountable. To that end, public's rights to access governmental proceedings and records should not be unreasonably restricted. It talks about 91A. We all know about that. And it talks about agency and public body records are subject to disclosure. And I don't think that your minutes on the website meet the standard of what's going on with that amount of money. Public has a right, and this again is from the Mackinson website. Public has a right to inspect and copy all non exempt government records in the custody control of a public body or agency. They're not immediately available, they'll be made available later. Any information created, accepted, or obtained on behalf of a public body are subject to that inspection. And it's written, oral, visual, electronic. And this is from the Attorney General's office. And that's the standard in, this, in the, the compliance with the law that the Board of Selectmen in governing the prudential affairs of this town, almost $20 million, is interested in because we stand this watch, and it's important. And we've lost millions of dollars before in this turbulent market. And again, thank you for your service in, in, in providing your service to this, this effort. These documents that are, are must be made available are documents stored in the computer, email, voicemail, instant messages, and digital photos. Electronic records must remain accessible for the same retention or archival periods as their paper counterparts. Concerning Mr. Mackinson's email to the town manager, this uh, most recently, <coughs> the attorney general, again from the Mackinson website, talks about redaction. Uh, your, your website at Mackinson uh, speaks to your uh, concentration or your practice concentration perhaps in uh, trustee of the trust funds. Uh, you put it out there that uh, you uh, enforce and follow best practices, that you ensure compliance with state laws, that you ensure an investment policy that meets RSA requirements that you provide secure online account access to those portfolios. Specifically, the Attorney General's uh, office, and again from the Mackinson website, talks about redaction. Your firm is in the business of working with nonprofits and government agencies, and I speak as one member of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's up to you and your responsibility when you're providing this information to the governing body to redact as the Attorney General has instructed your firm to do so, to provide information. And any liability that Mr. Mackinson would have talked about lies with your firm, because you solicited the business, you conduct the business, and it's your liability to conform with the Attorney General and to redact any confidential information. We hope we could have an agreement on that. Your website, as we get back to the Board of Trustees, your minutes I don't find especially helpful. I'll start off with your frequently asked questions. There's been uh, conversations about accessing the $18 million or a portion of that for our own town use. 
uh, on your question and uh, frequently asked questions. Can the town borrow money from the real estate fund? And you put yes, however, it makes little sense to borrow from the real estate. I don't think that's very objective. Um, I think that's an opinion. And then you further state on your website, on August 23rd, 2010, which as we go into the next fiscal year, that'll be six years old, the Board of Selectmen affirmed there is no benefit to the town in borrowing money from the real estate fund. I would suggest that that needs to come up uh, to a more contemporary speed in terms of information. Uh, your reports. You've got text and data from the annual town reports on your website. You've got to go to the town report and then go to your, your report within that, several hundred pages, and find that. I don't find that uh, very effective. I don't find it informative in the standard of this economy that exists today. I don't find that it meets the spirit or the standard of uh, state law. Uh, regarding the actual management, management information in the capital reserve fund, you've got several funds in there. Uh, the town roads capital reserve fund, it's got a 2014 year end balance of 610,000. That needs to be made more knowledgeable to the public, uh, especially as we do capital improvements, especially as we look towards budgets. Uh, and of course, that income distribution is directed by the town meeting and Warren articles, not by the selectmen, by the people of the town of Hampton. You've got the Department of Public Works Equipment Capital Reserve Fund, as directed by town meeting and Warren articles. You've got the Compensated Leave Trust Fund. The auditor for the town of Hampton has identified a seven-figure shortfall in that amount. Your 2014 year-end balance from the website today indicates a principal of 279,900. As the selectmen move forward, we'll be looking to uh, enhance our audit performance and actually identifying the cost of doing business with employees in this town because that trust fund balance is about $800,000 short of the actual exposure. And that was declared by our auditors at the last audit. And it's been a perennial problem. In terms of the evaluation, uh, I'll uh, forward to you through the chairman um, about 15 uh, different questions specifically. I won't bore the public nor take up time with the board. It'll be about the risk tolerance section in the investment policy. It'll be about the investment strategy section, the asset allocation section, the frequency of review section, overall constraints, the mutual funds, and an overall general synopsis of how you've changed your way of doing business from when there were exposures as recently as 2009 and 2011, where exclusive of distributions, the town of Hampton lost millions of dollars in that trust fund. And again, uh, the information that has come back uh, through you folks today, exclusive of distributions, or as you say on your website with Mackens and Company, pardon me, which was uh, for the last three months, 0331 2015 to 630 2015, which in my mind is a three month period. Uh, we've lost $170,000 this quarter, and that's from the yeah. Mackens and Company. So, uh, we just went through labor negotiations with the fire department. Uh, Mr. Silberdick, I, I think I haven't read it, but I think you read, put an, uh, an article on paper that the selectmen uh, were incorrect in asserting that. Uh, that amount of money would perhaps substantially, if not completely, fund the firemen's pay raise that you said the selectmen were incorrect in doing. So I wanted to bring that to the fore. We comply with state law. Body. We handle the prudential affairs, and if anybody on this board or in this town thinks that $18 million is not prudential, then I guess I'm in the wrong business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would you like to respond? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I would like to make an opening remark that 
Uh, we're always willing to provide information to the selectmen as requested. Uh, we don't recommend end runs, such as what occurred where Mr. Bean feels he can meet somebody tomorrow at a coffee shop or send an email to uh, David Mays and uh, ask for information. We'd like all that coming through the office of the chair, and in my absence, the vice chair, and we'll be happy to provide you the information since you're very much involved with protocol. I have here uh, the fund balance is going back to 2008 to 2015. I'd like to share these with you because there are periods where there are ups and downs. I provide these to the, to the selectmen. In 2010, we replaced the investment advisor we had at the end of 2010 with uh, Mackinson and Company, and then we put it out for bid in 2011. Mackinson and Company won the, won the bid. And we went from a strategy of direct investment in equities where we did lose millions of dollars and we took a much more prudent approach and we invested with mutual funds. We've invested both in the equities and uh, fixed incomes. And further, be because this is 100-year money, um, the way we view it, we've invested directly into investment grade fixed income securities which will hold to maturity. Our average hold period will be about 11 years, but there'll be no risk of uh, a principal. And as a result, the town can look forward to getting steady income. And uh, we are not, we have taken a strategy that uh, we don't have anything more than 5% in any one particular investment. We're constantly reevaluating our the performance of the investment. The investment advisor has the free reign to make changes and has done so. The board is, um, has recommended the investment advisor to make direct investments in fixed securities, and we now have two and a half million dollars in fixed, fixed investments, uh, direct investments, specifically bonds. And we're generating, uh, you know, the fact that the market went down, the markets are what the markets are and they will always be like that. And if you look at the schedule, there were many periods where there was losses. This is not the first time it's happened, and then it comes back. And over the long haul, the equity market has risen, and I don't see any reason that that won't happen again. And we've lived through uh, flash, as Steve, you're putting it out, flash markets. We had flash between 1987, October of 1987, the New York Stock Exchange, closed at 1738. The NASDAQ closed at 360, and the S&P closed at 224. The markets closed today at 17, New York closed at 17440, NASDAQ closed at 5039, and the S&P closed at 2067. I mean, between those periods, you had Black Monday, you had the tech bubble, you had the 2011 attacks, and you had the financial crisis of, 20, of 2007 to 2008. I mean, markets go up and markets go down. I mean, it's just the nature of the business. The funds are set up for long-term investing and long-term benefits to the town. Thank you. Why don't we let any of the other gentlemen that would like to say something? John? Uh, the what town hasn't you? lost any money over the eight years that you've been invested. You only lose money if you sell. And we haven't sold any of those funds. I think they're fine, Mrs. Wilson. Well, I, it, but the sound I, quality is not good right. at hey, home. That's not and up they to need, you to uh, handle it. They but need to I be heard. I think they're fine. I've got Thank it. you, okay. Mrs. Wilson. That's good. But the, uh, the assertion that the town has lost millions of dollars is incorrect. Uh, in the last seven years, there's been 400 and almost $4,500,000 turned over to the town at a rate of $642,000 a year. At the same time, the market value of the portfolio has gone up almost $3 million. So the assertion that the town has lost money is incorrect, and the assertion that you can take some of that money and buy something else with it is also incorrect. It's trust fund money. It's been run according to the RSAs. We've all been trained by the state of New Hampshire to be trustees, have gone to that training, and we have complied with all their regulations. So 
I mean, I take that as an affront to say to this group that you've lost money for the town. Thank you. And the other gentleman, please join us and Bill? say something yeah. if you'd like to. I'd like to have that close yes. to me. <laughs> you're yes. fine. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> oh, yes. No, you're not hearing him at home. I'd like to say why I, I am a trustee of trust funds. Um, when I first moved to the town, I didn't pay any attention to trust funds. But uh, Mr. Magenson educated me, <laughs> and I started to pay attention, and I found out that for 20 years after the uh, fund was established, and it was established specifically uh, by the sale of property down at the beach, and it was meant to be a, a permanent uh, fund for the use of the town. And I look upon that as being a treasure for the town. Not many other towns have anything like that. And whoever set that up and said you cannot spend the principal, but all the income goes to the town to defray taxes. That was a brilliant uh, setup, and, and, and we, we honor that today. The, um, for 20 years, it was about $16 million, 15 to $16 million. It never grew. And the reason it never grew is because they never invested any of the money to take care of inflation. And during that 20-year period, the inflation went up a huge amount. And if it earned any income, the income was turned over to the town, and so the fund stayed the same. And so when I uh, was educated to this fact, I decided to run. And unfortunately, I ran against Vic Lassad, <laughs> and there was no chance I was going to beat Vic, Vic Lassad. But in the same year, we put a Warren article in saying, let's increase the board from three to five. And the purpose of that was to get some new blood on the board uh, and hopefully do something about that lack of uh, preparedness for inflation. And that passed, and we, ne we now have five members of the board. And I ran later on and was elected to the board. Now, when the board decided to do something about inflation, the only place you do that is through equities. And they decided that 60-40 was a good split. 60 in the things they'd been invested in for years, fixed income, and 40% in equities, which, as, as time goes on, uh, it will go up over time and take care of that inflation shortfall. Sure. And unfortunately, the day that we changed it over was the day just before we had the market crash. And so we lost a million and a half or $2 million over a period of a year or so. And in hindsight, it would have been better for us to dollar cost average that change from 100% fixed income to 60% fixed income and 40% equities. But we didn't do that. And so we did lose that. And that put it down a million and a half to $2 million. And what and behold, today we have $18 million there, not $16 million. So it all came back. And because this is a permanent fund, set up for the benefit of the town to throw off income, uh, then this is, uh, we look upon this as permanent money. In other words, it's not a piggy bank for the town to take money out whenever they want, to spend on whatever they want, and destroy it. Uh, one of the advantages this, this fund has to the town is it goes on the balance sheet of the town when they go out to borrow money. So on the balance sheet of the town, they have $18 million. So when they go out to borrow some money to, to build a fire station or repair schools or whatever, uh, the borrowers I mean, the lenders look at that and they say, well, they got $18 million there. <coughs> and it, it gives us a lower interest rate. If you spend all that money, you're not going to get the $600,000 a year uh, in interest to the town, and you're not going to have that asset on the balance sheet to reduce the cost of your borrowing. So. What I'm saying is, it's permanent money, not a piggy bank for the town, and you should leave it alone because it's a treasure this town has that not very many other towns have. That's my reason for being a trustee. And how long have you been a trustee? Uh, about uh, five years. Thank you very much. It pays to have your experience of being on the board too, to be able to explain it like you just did. Thank you. Did you want to say something, sir? Um, I don't really have anything to add other than you do have a, a solid board of um, trustees.
trustees with some investment experience, and it's a pleasure working with them. Um, Thank you. And we're here to answer any questions about the portfolio. <clears throat> Thank you. And did you want me? No? No. Okay. We'll come to the board now, Mr. Bridal. Well, like I said, I obviously I use somebody and do my own investments for me for the same reason as you want to have some good quality people doing it. Um, it would be nice if we could, I'm not saying not pay it back, but use some of that instead of paying the interest rates, use some of that for some of our bond issues so that we're not paying two, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars in bond in, in interest. Still pay it back to the to the to the trust fund. So the trust fund wouldn't lose any of the money because they would be paid back. But would 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 refrain from us from keeping the interest rates. And I is there any way to do that? Well it, it's a wash uh, if it happens because the interest expense that you pay equals the interest income that we get. Uh -huh. They, they, they uh, offset each other, so it's basically an interest free loan to the town. And then when we get paid back, we get paid back to principal. We're losing on the basis of inflation because we, the time value of money will shrink the value of the money that's paid back. The town's borrowing rate is, I believe, less than what we're earning right now, and it's in the town's best interest because if you take five million or ten million of that money and you lose $400,000 of income, that's 400000 less income and it, it's, it's, an, it's a free loan where you're basically just taking the money because paying it back won't, won't help the trust. I think that uh, apart from this, I mean, you, the money goes to the town if you want it for public works, you can use it to either lower tax base or reallocate it in some manner that you can, you can use those funds for capital improvements are setting up money for for additional activities that help the town but I think it would it's bad accounting you wind up having no income coming in offsetting your interest and you're losing you're really losing the value of what that trust fund represents in my opinion bad business decision mm -hmm. mrs. Wolsey yeah, I, I certainly agree with the trustees on that. Um, we went from a an old-fashioned um, board of trustees in, in the three-man boards with gentlemen who wanted to be safe, safe, safe with the money. And uh, there was a little flurry when the uh, new trustees and the expanded board of trustees took over and got into investing, as you said, in the... Uh, in the stocks and, and in the market. So there was a, a transition there, but it, thing, it looks like things have certainly stabilized. Uh, I think you gentlemen have done an excellent job. I am totally opposed to tapping the principal on the trust fund. And as I uh, have mentioned before, um, in the 80s when town leased land was sold, which is where this money came from, uh, individuals were allowed to purchase the town leased land for a third of its value, and that was terrible. Uh, we'd have a, a double uh, fund now <clears throat> if people had been assessed, uh, shall we say, more uh, reasonably for the property that the town sold to them. But this is a great asset for the town. I appreciate the comment that um, uh, Norman made on having this $18 million uh, asset sitting there to assist us in borrowing and in bonding and ma making a more favorable um, presentation as a town to the borrowers when we go looking for help. I'm very, very wary. I don't want to see anything touched on the principal on this. And Mr. It, Waddell. It's good income. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And I hope nobody feels like it's an affront or anything, that, because it's just a discussion. It, that's my feeling, yeah. that we're just having a discussion mm -hmm. and, and nothing else. And, you know, I went to your meeting. I, I listened to it. I think you're well diversified. I think you've got a good por portfolio. I think, you, I think you, you guys are doing a good job. And I agree that it's 100-year money. Um, I also, I mean, I, I understand Phil's uh, concern. I think transparency is a thing that we all got to make sure we have it. everything is transparent, and I think you're you're trying to achieve that. Um, I, that it, that uh, 
you know, in today's market, investing in anything is in today's world, not today's market. I mean, we all hope things keep going up, but we just you, nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows. Anything could happen. Uh, but you have been successful in, in raising it up, and I do agree with the fact that you've got to keep up with inflation, and if you have it in something else, you're not going to keep up with inflation. You might feel safer about it, but it, nothing's happening to it. It's just staying there kind of flat. And so you have to take some risk. Um, and, and I agree that, you know, I, I, as much as I would love to say, let's borrow from it, I don't think we should. I, I, I agree. It, it's permanent money. It's principal. It should stay there, and it should produce income for us. So, you know, I agree with what you guys are doing right now. Well, I, I hope by being present at our meeting and you got the flavor of the interchange between the various parties, and we have investment professionals. It's yep. not a, a bunch of, I mean, we are caring community uh, representatives. We live in the area. We want to see Hampton do well. We really love Hampton, but we're also our professional people managing money. And as a result of that, we have mandated through discussion and with David and the Mackinson team to have <coughs> a conservative strategy that's still going to generate a 4% return to the town, which is a very attractive conservative philosophy and one that, we, frankly, we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. right. I, I agree. Thank you for what you do. And we love revenue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Can I get one, one just yes. follow up? Yeah, and, and again, we hear you, sir, and please, as, as Jim says, uh, no affront. This is just uh, 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 the prudential affair of the town. We are a governing body. You have your, your statutory uh, responsibilities in accordance with state law. This gentleman says we didn't lose money on your own board. This gentleman said you did lose $2 million just now. The numbers, uh, the num the numbers I, I am using are just off of your website. And the difference between... Um, younger people looking and listening to this uh, in Black Monday uh, is uh, Wall Street has changed and where our money swims. And just real quickly, and I think this is important, is the Glass-Steagall Act was repealed and investment banks uh, had to be bailed out by my grandchildren and everyone's grandchildren in this room. And just where our money is swimming, I just wanted to go over 10 top bank fines from 2010 to 2013. And again, these are the professionals, and they handle a lot more money than you do. But this is where our tax money is. Uh, $25 billion for uh, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America. They were fined uh, $25 billion for foreclosure processing abuses. And these are professional money men, too. Only they make a lot more money, more money than you folks do and than we do. Um, $9.3 billion for foreclosure abuses. 13 banks, to include Bank of America, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, and 10 others. $1.9 billion, money laundering, HSBC, 2012. $1.5 billion for manipulating LIBOR rates. $920 million in 2013 for lack of oversight of giant bets by the London Whale. That was with J.P. Morgan. $550 million for Goldman Sachs for materially misleading and incomplete information in the sale of mortgage-related securities. $453 million for Barclays for manipulation of interbank lending rates. $410 million electricity market manipulation for J.P. Morgan Chase. $335 million, discrimination against black and Hispanic borrowers, Bank of America. So times have changed on Wall Street. That's where our money is. We respect you. You're honest people. You're competent people. You're professional people. We are just doing our prudential affairs. The street has changed. Where our money swims has changed. And if we weren't standing on watch and doing this type of research and raising this, if the market does crash again and the government can't go to the well and bail out Wall Street with my grandchildren's money, then woe on me and anyone that sits on this board. And I thank you for your integrity and for showing up in your service to the town. Thank I you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a point regarding the comments you made. Of course, those are the, the result of, uh, of uh, the largesse of the uh, banking, the lack of controls in the banking community. And in that period of time, we had an investment advisor who was making investments and was very strong in the financial securities industry 
and we lost a lot of money on some of those names. And that was a, uh, the catalyst for replacing that investment advisor and putting it out for bid. And we changed our strategy from that kind of investing to a much more uh, hedged bet with uh, the mutual funds that we have purchased. And we are not heavily betting on Banks of America or Wells Fargo or HSBC. They may be buried in a portion of a portfolio someplace, but they're not where we're putting our money. And we, I think, have taken with this board <coughs> and a much more conservative view to protect the town's money and treat it like granny's money so it's not going to be lost. And uh, I, I agree that those kind of situations to which there's no, uh, there's no result, no, nothing has helped the citizens who suffered from all these things. But uh, we're seeing time as healing wounds. To just hope it doesn't repeat itself. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are free to meet with you anytime you want. Like to, if you want to have a visit with us or come to our meetings, you're always welcome to come and participate in them. We, we are trying to be open. We're always providing information to you as uh, that you request. So. That's all I can tell you. Now, Norm, how long have you been on the board? I think I've been there. I'm trying to remember. I ran on a campaign to get rid of all the scoundrels. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 2008. I've been there seven years. Yeah. And you four, four, four years. five, five, and five. Yeah, five. And you're the new person. He's Mackinson. Mac you're Mac with Mackinson. Okay. Well, great. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. And um, Thank you for your it gives the public a lot right. a chance to see what's happening. And we appreciate that you came in tonight. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.